Welcome back everyone to JFace Games. Today we are talking about EZD6. Um, what we're talking about today is, if you don't know this channel, I am building an RPG. We are looking at other games and trying to figure out how we can borrow concepts from those or get inspiration from those. Uh, this is a game that recently came out by Scotty the DM. He's got a YouTube channel, uh, and this has been getting a lot of likes and a lot of YouTube reviews, and rightfully so. It's a pretty slick design. Um, super fast, super fun. And so, apparently the story is that Scotty the DM has been playtesting this one out for about two years now at conventions, and then he is apparently ruthless, ruthlessly cutting out anything that's not fun, quote unquote. And so everything is about um, fun, fun, fun. And so it's a very streamlined OSR style dungeon diving style game, right? I'm getting my dice out, that's where the noise is. Uh, because I want to be able to demo with the fingers and everything what's going on in this game. Uh, it's easy D6, so of course the game is looking at D6s. Uh, it's a pretty simple system. In essence, what happens is uh, there is a DC chart based on a D6. Um, I'll just show it. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. And so it's very simple in the sense that a 2 is easy, a 3 is normal, a 4 is hard, 5 is very hard, 6 is super hard, and that's it. That's your DC chart. As a DM, that's all you need to know. Someone rolls a dice. Success is going to be an automatic success. A 6 is going to be an automatic success, and it's actually a crit. And a 1 is an automatic fail. Now, that's the game in a nutshell. So what makes it fun? Well, what makes it really interesting is they add in a couple different sort of like mechanics. One, uh, the whole other mechanic in the game is called boons and banes. Boons are that it's advantage. If you have a boon, that means you get two dice that you get to roll. And you roll those both and you take the higher. And a bane is you roll two dice and you, get, you take the lower. And you can have multiple boons. You can have like three, four, five boons. You could be rolling four d6 and you know, that kind of thing. Now, the crux of the game, uh, well, so let me tell you this, character creation. Character creation is pretty quick and simple as well, which is really nice. Um, they really just kind of sum it up concisely, where in, in essence, there's, I don't know, there's probably about 10 different roles in here or classes. You all have three health, that's it. You've got three quote unquote strikes, um, and that's it. And then you have some sort of armor type, and then it tells you what you have boons in. And so this is kind of neat, where it's like, um, here for instance is a warden, which would be like a ranger. And you can see that it says boon ranged weapons, right? And so it makes it very simple in wilderness task. It makes it very simple in terms of like, you get a lot of flavor out of that, and they just use boons and banes as like the main mechanic. Uh, so the warrior, which would be your fighter, boon, melee, or strength tasks. Whenever you're doing one of those things, you get 2d6 instead of uh, 1d6. And then there's some special abilities like Brutal Strike. You are a master with weapons, so now you crit on a 5 or a 6 um, if you're not using a shield, right? Uh, so that's it. That's pretty cool. Now, the crux of the game is that anytime you roll your 2d6, if you roll any ones, it's a fail right so there's a benefit to having a boon but there's also a somewhat of a drawback because it means there's more opportunity to critically fail and if you get like three four five d6 then you've got an issue right the way they counter that is that i don't see if they have a character sheet in here but in essence they have this other system of this hero die right and karma okay so hero die is in essence a inspiration die, it's a reroll, right? So if I roll 2d6 because I got a boon and one of them's a one, I can use, spend my hero die to reroll, uh, or no, I'm sorry. I think that it's not a reroll, it's an extra die. So I can get a third die, um, or no, I think it's a reroll. So you reroll one of your die and you get a new one, right? Karma, what karma is, is that those are, I, I already borrowed that mechanic, kind of, in the teamwork or it's similar to ICRPG where karma is points that you can add to die, right? So if you ever have a, if you rolled a one and you have one karma, you can make that one a two. And if you rolled a uh, five, you can make that five a six and it becomes a crit. And that's your karma points. Anytime you get six karma, you can turn it into a hero die. 
Um, because the hero die, obviously the benefit of that is that you could reroll and get a six instead of a one. I think that the hero die is you get an extra die, but I'd have to reread that part. I apologize. So anyways, so they have the karma and you can turn the karma and you can add up things. Now, this game can continue to crit. So if you get a six on an attack, that counts as one damage, one strike against the enemy, and you get to reroll another six to see, so it's exploding dice. And every time you get a six, it's another damage. And the karma, you could, because it, say you have like five karma and you roll a six on the first one, well, your next one, say you roll a four, you could use two karma to make that a six. Now you roll another one and you roll a five, you use another karma to make that a six. And next thing you know, you get this massive spike damage. And this is the guy I said in a couple of videos back that he said, um, why does the, oh no, no, I'm sorry, that's Deathbringer. Deathbringer said that, why is the rogue the only one that gets this massive spike damage or the paladin in D&D? So that's the main mechanics of the game. And then what's cool is he has this other way of customization for your character where you start to add in all these other sort of like, I'm gonna say feats. They, they call them uh, inclinations, right? And this is a really cool list of stuff. Um, where it's things like, you know, this is where you might have something like sneaky or sticky fingers or trap finder or toughness, right? Tough bastard or hedge wizard fighter. This is where you as a player can take two or three of these things and they give you, for instance, sneaky, you get a boon whenever you're trying to hide. Fighter, you get a boon with melee weapons. Um, so it's it's other ways of kind of like yeah I'm a I'm a rogue character but I'm also really good with weapons and I'm a tough bastard right so it's another way of kind of customizing your character but it's very clean and very fast you could you could knock out a character creation super quick right so a very cool system now let's talk about the magic system because that's what we're really here for so the what what's really interesting about this is that the magic system he wanted the magic system to feel different than the actual system because he wanted to make it stand out, right? So the magic system, the way it works, is that you will have, and I haven't been writing anything, I apologize, but now it's time to write, put the book down. Um, you as a player have a d6, right? And that's gonna be your spell. And you decide whatever the hell spell you want. You just make it up, right? You just completely make it up. You say, I'm going to shoot over here and it's going to be a ranged weapon. It's going to be, you know, AOE and it's going to stun things. You just, and you just, you color it however you want to color it, right? The DM, depending on how they feel challenging that spell is, is going to choose, the DM is going to choose one to three D6, right? And that's like the challenge pool, right? They roll that pool of dice, and whatever the highest number they roll is now what you have to beat as a player, okay? You as a player can choose one to three d6 to roll against this. That's called like powering up. Now, the problem is that, once again, we talked about anytime you roll a one, it's a fail, okay? And you can't use, I think you can use your hero dice to roll an extra die or reroll, whatever it is, but you can't use karma as a caster to bump up ones. What you use as a caster to bump up ones is your health. You have to actually take strikes, and you've only got three strikes of health. So you have to actually sacrifice some health in order to um, keep that up. So it's a really cool system. It's Once again, it's, it's still using D6. It's just a little different, but it adds a different mechanic feel to the game if you're a caster because of that. Now, let's talk about what this might mean for us if we're borrowing from this concept. So let's say you have multiple schools, first off, like it's not that you're just gonna be able to cast anything of any type, right? You, if you want some sort of flavor, there will be different schools or different elements or whatever of power. And you choose those and you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this fire realm or i'm going to take this ice realm or i'm going to take this necromancy realm or whatever you know there's some form of schools and each one costs some sort of building character points in order to take it right then this is where it gets tricky this is where we're going to have to workshop this a little bit then you have your mystic die 
you know, before we talked about the fact that you have a defender die, a controller die, a leader die, a striker die, a marksman die, and you also have this mystic die, right? You were going to roll your mystic die against the actual pressure that we've already talked about, the DC dice that the player has, or the DM has decided, right? Uh, but that is just close magic. That's just if you are, I'm next to you and I'm hitting you and maybe I'm powering my fist, that I get to roll my mystic die against um, you as a player. Or maybe I'm doing one simple effect, but it's I'm close, I am nearby. For each variable that I wanna add to the spell, and a variable, for instance, might mean distance, might mean AOE, might mean some sort of condition, like a slow, snare, you know, fear, etc. cetera. Uh, it might mean um, a dot, I don't know, anything. Any sort of condition that I wanna add to this means that I have to have an extra die that I'm rolling, right? As of now, that means more mystic die, right? So now, say I decide I wanna do a distance um, slow on a target, I'm gonna be rolling my mystic die times three, right? So I'm gonna be rolling three of them. The normal mystic die, plus one for distance, plus one for the slower snare, right? So now I'm rolling three die to make that happen. So I should put two extra die. <clears throat> so the problem now is that I have to two extra die, total three. The problem now is that all of my dice must beat the pressure, right? Which is now, that's a big challenge, depending on how high that pressure is. But I can use my teamwork die once again, or the teamwork points to modify this, and I can use my own health to modify this, right? So that's the part that we're kind of taking away also from this EDC, uh, easy D6. So you're having to roll multiple dice. Now there will be feats to help you out. For instance, maybe you're gonna have a feat that allows you to um, you don't have to add an extra dice for when you're adding distance, right? Or you don't have to add an extra dice if you're adding a snare or something like that. Who knows? There are other feats that you could add into it. Um, now, the only problem with this, and this is what I was saying hinking, this is a little hinky, is I like this concept overall, but it eliminates, and so one of the things I like about it is that if you wanna go down this route you're gonna be getting feats to make your spells a little bit better. You're gonna be getting feats to use different schools of magic. You're gonna be using feats, or I'm sorry, I'm saying feats, but points to charge those up. You're gonna be using points to get your mystic dice bigger. And that makes sense because as a, as a caster, it means that you're sacrificing taking other stuff. So you're not gonna be as good at other things. The problem there is that technically, the controller, defender, um, leadership, and striker and marksman die, technically those dice are supposed to represent being able to do those things, being able to control someone, snare them, put a condition, being able to do a range damage, etc. Those are supposed to represent those, and it was originally intended that you were rolling the mystic die in addition to that, right? So that becomes a problem because now we're getting a little bit tricky because if we want to be true to form in the original design of this game, it would be that you would have to roll your mystic die, plus if I wanted to try to control someone, plus my controller die, and if it was a ranged attack, plus my marksman die, which a player being able to get all three of these dice high up in quality, that's a problem. They're not gonna be able to do that. Now maybe, that means that someone has to specialize. So if I'm going to be a caster, I'm a controlling caster, right? Or if I'm if I'm trying to specialize, I am a uh, controlling DPS ranged individual. So that's the main consideration now: is how do how do we build the other attributes into this magic system? Because I like this idea overall. I like the concepts here. I think that it makes it fun because technically any spell exists and it's possible. It's up to the imagination of the player, which is wonderful because it means they're engaging in role-playing. But the problem being now, how do we make sure that it's um, attainable, meaning that they can have, they can use these controller, defender, marksman, striker, and, and um, leadership die, but it's not making them, um, it's not too mad right um multiple was it multiple attribute 
requirements. I forget what that was. That's a that's a min maxing sad versus mad. Um, so that's where we're at at the moment. I'm gonna think about this more. I wanted to throw this out there to get, kind of get everyone an idea and also to introduce you guys to EZD6. And uh, we, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments um, as we're trying to blend this a little bit more seamlessly into this system. All right, guys, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, um, hit the like button, and hit me up in the comments.